Hello students. Now before starting with general embryology, I think it's better to revise the basics. So this class on basic concepts and gametogenesis. Now what is embryology? Embryology is the study of development of an individual before birth. And why do we study embryology? Well, we study embryology so that we can appreciate the anomalies which cause the arrest of development. So why do we need to study these anomalies, appreciate the anomalies? Because we want to prevent them and we want to treat them. For example, if a pregnant lady is taking teratogens and we know that this lady has started taking teratogens, we will ask the lady to stop taking them. So we are doing prevention. We advise pregnant ladies to avoid teratogens and that is a part and parcel of prevention of anomalies. Second aspect is treatment of anomalies. For example, if we know about the development of testes, we can appreciate what are the levels at which the testes lie at different months during their descent. So that again is an important part in the treatment of undescended testes. So embryology is the study of development of an individual before birth. Up to two months of life, the developing individual is called embryo and from two months to delivery, we call it fetus. So moving forwards, mitosis and meiosis you have done in plus two. Let us revise it. Mitosis is the normal multiplication of cells. The daughter cells have identical number of chromosomes and genetic content while meiosis takes place during formation of gametes. So during formation of spermatozoa and ova. Number of chromosomes here is reduced to half in meiosis and genetic information in gametes is not identical due to crossing over. So this is expected from you at plus two level. Still we will revise it, go through it again. So overview of mitosis, in interphase the DNA content doubles. In prophase, the chromosomes are distinct. In metaphase, the chromosomes are arranged at equator and attached to spindle. After metaphase comes anaphase, the centromere of each chromosome splits into two chromosomes. So there is a longitudinal split and due to that each chromosome is broken down into two chromosomes. And in telophase, the nuclear membranes form so that the daughter cells have identical number of chromosomes because the centromere in anaphase has split into two. So one chromosome has split into two and when the nuclear membranes form, each daughter cell has got identical number of chromosomes as the parent. So overview of meiosis, the meiosis has got meiosis 1 and meiosis 2. Now in the interface of meiosis 1, the DNA content doubles. So prophase is divided into stages. In leptotene, the chromosomes are distinct. Two chromatids cannot be distinguished. In zygotene, the chromosomes are arranged at equator and attached to spindle. So the homologous chromosomes, they are attached and bivalent formation is there. In pachytene, the two chromatids of each chromosome became, become distinct. So we have a tetrad formation. One, two, three, four. Four chromatids can be seen now. This is called tetrad. The two central chromatids become coiled over each other. You can see here the two central chromatids become coiled over each other and this is called crossing over and the points of adherence are called chiasmata. This happens in pachytene. And in diplotene, the genetic material is exchanged. So this happens in prophase of meiosis 1. As in mitosis, in metaphase 1, the chromosomes are attached to equator of spindle. And in anaphase 1, there is no splitting of centromeres. One entire chromosome of each pair moves to each pole. So because of this, the number of chromosomes is halved. The daughter cells have haploid number of chromosomes. So 23 chromosomes in each daughter cell is made up of two chromatids. In telophase 1, the nuclear membranes form similar to 
mitosis. Now in meiosis 2, as in mitosis, the sister chromatids are separated. Due to crossing over during meiosis 1, daughter cells not identical in genetic content. So here, because of crossing over during meiosis 1, the daughter cells are not identical in genetic content. You can make out in this diagram here. So meiosis 1 versus meiosis 2, what are the differences? Although chromosome number after meiotic 1 division, first meiotic division is haploid, DNA content is not halved. Why this happens? Because during interphase, the DNA content had doubled. Now, no reduction of chromosomes during second meiotic division. Why? Because like mitosis, the centromere is split. So, because of that, the chromosome number is not halved. But the DNA content is halved in meiosis too because there is no duplica duplication of DNA in interphase of meiosis 2. Duplication present in interphase of meiosis 1. So students remember this, that in interphase of meiosis 1, the duplication was there of DNA. But in interphase of meiosis 2, there is no duplication of DNA. So because there is no duplication of DNA, the genetic content is halved in meiosis 2. So what happens during meiosis is that the chromosome number is halved during meiosis 1 because the homologous chromosomes, they separate from each pair. Each pair of chromosomes goes to opposite pole. While in meiosis 2, the DNA content is halved because in its interface, there was no duplication of DNA in interface of meiosis 2. So now we come to spermatogenesis. Sometimes in the examination, a simple question comes in the final examinations of phase 1 MBBS write a short note on spermatogenesis and you feel ah i know it but in writing there is a problem so you must practice the diagram here and remember that the formation of spermatozoa from spermatogonia is called spermatogenesis now seminiferous tubules have got two types of cells they are the spermatogonia and nurse cells or sertoli cells now, spermatogonia type A divide mitotically to form more spermatogonia type A and also spermatogonia type B. We will see in the figure also. Now, spermatogonia type B enlarge or undergo mitosis to form primary spermatocytes. So, you can see here, spermatogonia type A, they form more spermatogonia type A and type B also. Now, type B, they enlarge to form the primary spermatocyte. Now, primary spermatocyte has, is 44 plus X plus Y. It undergoes first meiotic division. So, what happens is the chromosome number is halved. We have 22 plus X and 22 plus Y. These are the secondary spermatocytes. And then the second meiotic division takes place. So, here the chromosome number is the same, 22 plus X, but the DNA content is halved. So, we have got the four daughter cells. The chromosome number is halved and the DNA content is also now because in meiosis 2 there is no duplication of DNA. So the DNA content is halved in meiosis 2. So now we have four daughter cells and they are not identical in genetic content. So now this process of conversion of spermatids into spermatozoa is called spermiogenesis and remember students spermiogenesis is a part and parcel of spermatogenesis so you have to mention that the process of formation of conversion of spermatogonium into spermatozoa is called spermatogenesis and it includes spermiogenesis which is the process of conversion of circular spermatids their transformation into the spermata so, so sometimes in the examination the question comes spermiogenesis or spermatiliosis so then you don't have to mention the whole process of spermatogenesis you just have to mention this is the process by which spermatid changes its shape to become a sper sper spermatozoan so 
process of transformation of circular spermatid to spermatozoan is called spermiogenesis. So this circular spermatid is becoming the spermatozoan and you can make out here that the Golgi apparatus of the spermatid it forms the acrosomic cap, the nucleus forms the head and the proximal centriole comes to lie in the neck, distal centriole becomes ring shaped annulus, the mitochondria shown in light green here they form the sheath of the middle piece and this is the morphology of the sperm, adult sperm. So it has got a head, a neck with the proximal centriole, it has got a middle piece with the mitochondria and it has got a principal piece and or tail. The other name for principal piece is tail. So if you get a note on spermatogenesis, mention how spermatogonia get converted into spermatozoa. If you get a question of, on spermiogenesis, that is the transformation of circular spermatid to spermatozoan. And this diagram then you have to draw for spermiogenesis. So in the head lies genetic material and lysosome which digests the egg cell membrane. This lysosome digests the egg cell membrane. Middle piece contains mitochondria which provide ATP for sperm motility. Axial filament is present in middle piece and tail and the tail is about 10 times as long as middle piece. So re remember that. Then less frequently but this can also come in the examination comes the question write a note on oogenesis. So what is oogenesis? Process of formation of ovum in the ovary. Now cortex of ovary contains oogonia and ova are derived from oogonia. So this, these are the stages in oogenesis. The oogonium 44 plus X plus X, it enlarges to form primary oocyte. Now first meiotic division takes place. So chromosome numbers are is halved. In second meiotic division, the chromosome number is not halved. And what is formed is polar body after first meiotic division to get rid of unwanted chromosomes. And then second meiotic division, the second polar body is formed and ultimately this ovum is formed. So these are the stages in oogenesis. So you have to remember this diagram also. Now remember that one primary spermatocyte forms four spermatozoa and the cytoplasm gets equally distributed while one primary oocyte forms only one ovum and almost all cytoplasm goes to the secondary oocyte. First polar body gets half the chromosomes but no cytoplasm as it has gone to the secondary oocyte. So the first polar body its formation is just to get rid of unwanted chromosomes. Now sex determination. Sex of a child is determined at the time of fertilization. So if the sperm is Y bearing, if the sperm is Y appearing here as you can make out then the zygote has 44 plus X plus Y chromosomes and the offspring is male. On the other hand if the sperm is X bearing then the zygote has 44 plus X plus X chromosomes and the offspring is female. So you remember that at the time of fertilization whether the sperm is, to, worm is, sperm is X bearing or Y bearing that determines the sex. So sperm, if it is X bearing, then the zygote, uh, which is going, is going to develop into a girl. And if the sperm is Y bearing, then the zygote is going to develop into a boy. So this is the, brings us to the end of the topic. In the next class, we will do the uterine cycle and the ovarian cycle. Thank you.